Hey everybody, my name is Colin Slaap, watchmaker from the Netherlands and a green coat clip. Uh, we are going to discuss how to polish vintage watch cases. Well, a huge topic and not really for watchmaking. Watch polishing is a completely different profession from watchmaking. Polishing is the fastest way to kill the value of a beautiful vintage watch, if you do it wrong. Polishing is the fastest way of increasing uh, the value of your vintage watch, if you do it right. Well, I'm going to talk you through all the different steps, uh, going to be a few parts of this series in how to polish vintage watch cases. Like I said, it is a profession in itself. If you want to be excellent in polishing vintage watch cases, you have to go to training. I can fully recommend uh, the Wastep training in Neuchâtel for polishing. You will meet the maestro José Berenger, Mr. Big Potatoes. He is the man for polishing. Um, same here, we do uh, training in vintage watches uh, polishing. You can s watch every single clip on YouTube until you see blue in the face, but still you need the guidance, the training for a bit more here, a bit more there. If you hold it like this, less revelations, uh, uh, Revolutions, uh, more um, uh, polishing paste, less polishing paste. If you really want to get the knack of the, the profession, you do need training. And um, if you ever meet uh, the maestro Jose Berenger, please say hello because he's the funniest, nicest man you ever meet in uh, Worstep, uh, Neuchâtel in, uh, in Switzerland. First things first, we need some definition of what we're talking about. Because polishing watch cases, the actual polishing is the last 30 seconds of the complete process. Cheers. If there are scratches in your watch case or dents, you cannot polish them out. Polishing is just the final 30 seconds to make it shiny. Not all the steps you do up front. And that's what I'm going to show you, talk about. We are going to show you all the different wheels, materials you can use. There are so many, many, many more. I'm going to show you all the different pastes. Every single paste got their own functionality, way of using, toxic, non-toxic. Um, it is a science and I spent so many years and years and years in perfecting um, the polishing of vintage watch cases. Um, first things first. I'm going to show you in the next clip, coming soon, how to read different vintage watches if it's possible to um, polish them. If you see stainless steel back on the case back, um, only the case back is made of stainless steel, which is possible, and the rest is probably nickel plated. Uh, gold plated stuff like that with the tiniest layer of the, f the, the, the top layer if you try to polish that you go straight through it's going to be horrible and the different kinds of finishing um, is easy to spot on vintage watches if you know where to look 
I'm going to talk you through all of that. Then the different pastes. If you use a wheel, well, there are several. This is a buff for the final polishing. The paste is the stuff that does the work. The wheel is just a transporting medium. So if it's too dry, uh, not enough paste, too wet, too much paste. The devil is in the details, but to get an excellent result, you need to put in the elbow grease. Uh, um, try to learn, seek guidance, and um, I'm sure you all can learn it. Um, and it's so satisfactory if it's a, um, a dull, horrible watch case, case back, uh, bezel, bracelet, clasp. And you get it back to perfection with all the straight edges. It's, it's lovely when, it's a, a, when a plan comes together. The thing is, when you're polishing, the straight edges from a vintage watch case can become rounded. That is horrible. Uh, and the devaluation of your watch uh, straight down, down the hole. Um, that is what at all costs we would like to uh, avoid. Is that all the straight beautiful lines are getting dull and rounded. Uh, that's just horrible. But let me show you uh, first uh, the first just a few steps theory in polishing. Sorry I'm going to bore you a bit with the theory but if you don't understand what you're doing you will never get a good end result. So let me show you. First things first polishing. If you've got an irregular surface All the light is being reflected very diffuse for your eye. So with all the edges the light is getting uh, reflected. You get a very grey reflection. If it's perfectly polished all the light will be reflected. No uh, light will be reflected back into your eye. So that is a black polish. Black polish because no light is reflected. So the end result looks black to the human eye. So the different Phases in between a very irregular surface or just perfectly flat is different shades of grey. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and a bit like that. A bit like that. The light will be reflected in a different way. But if you got a Perfect polish, black polish, black, white, all light reflected back in, a bit like that. All light is reflected away from the eye. Every small defect in the surface is such a contrast with the rest, it is reflected back. And the only thing you'll see is just that defect because it's the only thing actually visible for the human eye. So, like I said earlier, you cannot polish away scratches or dents. Because polishing is just the final 30 seconds of your job. If you got a defect and you try to polish it out with a big wheel turning, you move a bit of material, it will look like this. 
you'll never get the perfect straight angle with the black white so it looks like uh, a mirror on a fairground it looks horrible you cannot polish away a defect but if there is a defect and you slightly remove material and then the final polish then you get the beautiful black polish you are thinking then you are removing a huge amount of material you leave with such a small watch at the end no it's microns thousands of uh, millimeters and i'm going to show you uh, we call it uh, in the netherlands hexavet you can move material about with your polishing machine uh, a different block like that and especially with hard felt you can move material uh, without removing it. it it's once you got the feel for it and you're in control it's magic it is magic uh, moving the material about beautiful stuff and beautiful straight edges with a beautiful end result well that's the first introduction uh, next step is reading the watch itself if it's possible for polishing uh, what material is it the different kinds of finishing in um, vintage watches because we like to keep it original straight edges paramount and originality the same uh, finish as the original one final thing you I'm going to tell it a bit more uh, but to let it sink in polishing watch cases is a profession in itself you already know that but the only thing that makes it beautiful is contrast so a highly polished surface next to a highly polished surface looks cheap and it doesn't look right if you got a brushed surface or straight graining next to a highly polished surface that's luxury the contrast is what makes it special and appealing to the eye so next video i'll show you how to read the vintage watches what kind of finishing there is and then you will see that the contrast is what it makes luxurious and look special and um, make the the value increase the value of your vintage watches so hope to see you soon my name is Carl Slaap watchmaker in the Netherlands next step is how to read your uh, vintage watch um, in case of polishing what is possible what's not possible hope to see you soon see ya bye, -bye.